Hey guys and gals, it's Derek. Welcome to the sixth video in the Aruba Bots REST API and Python series. In today's video, I will show you how to use the Swagger API web interface that comes built into every single AOS CX switch. To access the Swagger interface, first go to the switch's web interface at https colon double forward slash followed by the hostname or IP address. Then log in. Once the dashboard loads, click the gear icon from the top right and click API. At this point in time, the Swagger API page will generate and load all the API information, which may take a brief moment. The Swagger UI provides an interface to explore the available APIs and even try them out by executing requests directly within the web page. These APIs are automatically generated from the backend configuration database. This means that the REST APIs on AOS CX are extremely powerful and extensive, allowing users to configure virtually every aspect of the switch programmatically. By clicking on a heading, you can see the available API endpoints and allowed methods on those endpoints. The methods shown are color-coded for visual guidance, and these methods themselves can be clicked on to reveal more detail. Here we have the APIs for VLANs. We click and we see the available endpoints. As you can see, there are two, slash system slash VLANs and slash systems slash VLANs slash ID. The latter is the endpoint used to interact with an individual existing VLAN on the system. So in order from top to bottom, these methods respectively get the VLANs on the system, create a new VLAN, delete a VLAN, get the details for a particular VLAN, and update details of a VLAN. First, let's see what we can do with the get. So I can execute this request as is by going to the bottom and hitting the submit button. This shows me the list of VLAN URIs. Swagger, however, equips all gets with some useful optional parameters. For example, the depth parameter is used to inspect further levels of detail. If I specify depth 1, then all the VLANs in the list are expounded upon to show their details. I can also use the attributes parameter in conjunction with the depth parameter to show just a subset of the details of each VLAN. You can use control click to select multiple attributes to be displayed. I'll select the ID and name attributes. And when we execute this, we see just those fields. A third parameter is the selector parameter. This parameter allows you to see only attributes that belong to one or more categories, configuration, status, or statistics. When using put to modify an existing resource, it is best practice to execute a get on that resource first with the selector set to configuration, and then use that data in the put call after modifying whichever attributes you wish to change. The count parameter is used to get just the number of items, foregoing retrieval of the items themselves. and it tells us there are four VLANs. Additionally, you can filter on all these attributes. So 
So for example, if I want to filter on uh, VLAN ID and I'll put VLAN ID 1 then I see just the VLAN 1 I can also retrieve the details for an individual VLAN by doing the get on this particular VLAN resource you'll notice that this operation requires a mandatory ID parameter other than that, it operates the same way as the previous get that we looked at, except it retrieves the details of just one VLAN instead of a list of VLANs. So here I'll do a get on VLAN 1, and we should be able to see just the VLAN details of VLAN 1. Next, let's look at the post. This data parameter is where the user enters the JSON required for the request body. To see what fields can be used in the data, you can click on Model. The model lists all the possible fields and provides a description of each one. It also says the field's type and requisiteness. If it says Optional, then I know that field is not required. Now, I'll create a VLAN with ID 2 and name VLAN 2. I already know that these two fields are the only required fields as I'm familiar with this particular API. So if I submit this request, it gives me 201, which is a success. So now I should be able to go back to the get and verify that my VLAN 2 was created. And I'd like to clear this ID filter. And as you can see, the last item in the list is VLAN 2. Now let's take a look at the put method. You'll notice that the put requires the ID parameter since it's an operation on a single VLAN. Like the post operation, it contains a data parameter in which you put the request body. Similarly, it also has the model which shows the user what fields are available to use in the request body as well as their types and requisiteness. It's a best practice, and I'm repeating this, to do a get first on that particular resource with the selector parameter set to configuration and then modify that data and use that in the put request body to make sure you don't inadvertently remove any pre-existing fields on that resource. For example, if I want to update the name of the VLAN 2 I just created, I'll do a get on it first. So I'll specify ID 2 and then selector configuration. And then I copy this entire data into the put request body and I'll type an ID2 here. Then I'll change the name field. I'll name it VLAN2 with the 2 being spelled out and I submit my put request and it said the ID2 could not be modified so I will take that out and I get 200 which is a success so now let me go back and double check by getting the details of VLAN2 and as you can see the name has now changed. Lastly, let's explore the delete method. The delete method requires the ID parameter because it deletes an individual VLAN. As such, the user can only remove one VLAN at a time using the delete request. The delete is very straightforward. All I have to do is type in the ID and submit the request. And the 204 response code tells me that the delete is successful. Lastly, I'll verify by getting all the VLANs on the system. And as you can see, VLAN 2 no longer exists. So that's it for Swagger. 
Swagger offers a nice interactive interface wherein you can see all the API endpoints and methods as well as execute requests directly from your browser. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, the place to get in touch with us is the Airheads Developer Community, a forum where all interested parties can share knowledge and collaborate. I'll leave a link to the forum in the description below. As always, thanks for watching and see you next time.